Thank you, Miles, for the introduction. Thank you, Angela, Monica, and Miles, for this nice invitation uh, to this uh, very nice seminar. So today I will talk about a joint work with uh, Franck Merl from uh, Sergi Pontoise and also EHES. So let me first introduce the PDE. Okay, so, okay, this is it. We simply have the semilinear uh, wave equation in, in n space dimensions with the simplest uh, nonlinear term that provides blow up, namely u to the power p, which respects the, the sign of u. And we have, uh, so initial data u0 and u1, which are in h1 and also in l2. And most importantly, I have p, which is more than one, so we can have blow up at least at the ODE level. If you take u second equals u to the p, then when p is more than one, you can have blow up. And also p is less than pc, which is one plus four over n minus one, which is the conformal uh, critical exponent. And first remark, this is less than the Sobolev exponent. And I can tell from the beginning that we have a gap between these two exponents, very few results are known. Maybe I can tell about that later. I would like to mention some earlier work, starting with Levine, which give uh, sufficient conditions for blow up. Also, I mentioned the work of Caffarelli, Friedman, and many others, which you can see here. But I will mention them uh, maybe later while uh, talking about results. Okay. So when you have such a PDE, the first question is simply the Cauchy problem. What can we do? So we will uh, work in H1 times L2, which is the energy space. So this is convenient for us because my goal, I can tell from now, is the asymptotic behavior at blow up and special kind of behavior. So for this, you can simply see the works of Ginebre, uh, Soffer and Velo, Lindblad and Sogo, Shatah and Struve also. Then, as usual, you have the following two possibilities for the maximum solution. Either it exists for any time positive, and we call it global solution, or it exists up to some maximum time, T bar, and we can call it singular solution. Okay, now the question, can we have singular solutions? So here you have two criteria. I will mention the second first. The second is historically the first, probably, or I don't know, maybe this is not clear. It's by Levine in 1974. It says the following, if this quantity, which is the conserved energy, is negative initially, then the solution cannot be global. Of course, we can have other type of solutions because we have the finite speed of propagation. So take any ODE solution, which does not depend at all on space, okay? And then you take the initial data, you make some far away cutoff in space, then the solution will remain ODE uh, solution and space independent in some backward light cone. And if your ODE solution blows up, then also your PDE solution will blow up. So you will have something which is uh, a blow up solution, which is not trivial, which depends in fact on space because of the cutoff. So my goal in this talk is to talk about singular solutions. First notion I would like to introduce is the notion of maximal influence domain. So, uh, this uh, notion relies on a crucial feature in this PDE, it's the finite speed of propagation. Okay, so here, because we have the wave equation and we have a second derivative in time equals the Laplacian, which means one times the Laplacian, our speed of propagation will be one, in fact. Okay, let me go back to the PDE. So because of the speed of, uh, finite speed of propagation, if T bar is the time which is provi provided by the Cauchy theory in H1 times L2, meaning if you want a solution which is defined for all X in Rn and for all T up to some maximum time, then you have this strip, which 
which is this one up to t bar. But because of the finite speed of propagation, you can in fact extend the, uh, your solution up to some uh, boundary, which is the graph of a one Lipschitz function, x gives t of x, which means that up to this graph, you, you have a solution. Why this? Because for example, in this blue cone, backward light cone, the value of the solution here depends only on, of what, on, on what happens at the basis of the cone. So no problem, you can uh, extend your solution beyond the time t bar, which is provided by the Cauchy theory. And because of the finite speed of propagation, this t of x has one as Lipschitz uh, uh, constant. In some sense, the solution will blow up everywhere in space. Okay, for every x in R n, you have a local blow up time, which is not the same for all uh, the points. And t bar, somehow, the time where we quit the Cauchy space is the first uh, blow up time, the minimum, somehow. Then I would like to introduce uh, a notion of non-characteristic points and then characteristic points as follows. Let me go back to the other uh, slide. So here, by definition, this domain of definition of my solution is in fact a, a union of backward light cones meaning that if you take one point, say here, which is in the domain of definition, then all the backward light, light cone up to t equals zero is included in the domain. From this, for any point which is on the boundary of this uh, domain of definition, if you draw the light cone, the backward light cone with slope one, then it is all included in du. And now, if I can change the slope a little bit and make it equal to delta and still stay in the domain of definition, then I will call my point a non-characteristic point. If not, I will say that it is characteristic. And this is just a matter of notation. I would like to call script R the set of all non-characteristic points, script S the set of all characteristic points. Okay, so S union R it makes the whole space. And here I can say th something from the beginning. I, we choose R as a regular because even though when X is in R, the solution will blow up, it will be uh, a soft kind of blow up in some sense. S is like singular, okay? So in fact, it will be a, a, a more singular solution. So in both cases, the solution will be singular, no way. But here in S, it will be somehow uh, more nasty. Now, uh, although my uh, talk is about the two-dimensional wave equation, I would like to mention what we proved for, uh, in one space dimension because we are happy to say that we have a catalog of all possible uh, behaviors. We have a classification and we more or less all the questions are already uh, solved, but this is not true, in fact, because we are working with some colleagues on many, many open problems. But at least we have, we have a, a classification. So first remark is all the blow-up solutions have non-characteristic points, which is, in fact, the first blow-up time. So you take the, the, the blow-up curve, x gives t of x, you take the first, uh, the minimum, and this gives you a non-characteristic point. I can go back, for example, here. You see, here in T bar, you can put a green uh, a backward cone with slope delta with delta between zero and one. You have really the choice. So this is easy remark. But something which is not easy at all is the existence of solutions with characteristic points. I'm not saying that any blow-up solution has a characteristic point. This is not true. For example, in the examples provided by Caffarelli and Friedman in the 80s, we had no characteristic points. So people were thinking that maybe we have only non-characteristic points. But yes, with uh, Frank Mann, we could prove that we have some examples. And let me give you one such example. You take, in fact, 
odd initial data in one space dimension. Then in two space dimensions, it's a different story and it's in fact the heart of my talk. But let me start with one space dimension. If initial data is odd, then the solution will remain odd for all times, okay? And in particular, its value at, in, at zero will always be zero. And zero, the origin, is all, of course, a blow up uh, point because the solution blows up everywhere. So here at zero, the solution is always equal to zero. And we have a blow up point, which is a characteristic point, in fact. Strange, but in a minute I will show you uh, the difference in the behavior. More importantly, if you perturb this uh, example, breaking the symmetry, then you will still have a solution with a characteristic point in between. The idea here why we take large plateaus for this uh, uh, example is that, in fact, in some backward light cone with bases, the support of the plateau the solution will be always space independent. So ODE solution, so explicitly computed. So if it is explicitly computed, you can see by yourself that it blows up. So we are sure that it is a blow up solution. It's not a global solution. And in fact, because it's uh, anti-symmetric, we'll see that uh, it has a characteristic point here. Now, let me go move to the asymptotic behavior. So we would like to find a notion of blow up profile for the solution. Remember that the solution blows up everywhere. So I take any x0 and I, and I introduce this change of variable, which I will explain. So you take time first, time is replaced by a slow time, s is negative log of tx0 minus t, which goes to infinity as t approaches the singular time. Then, in the space, we have a kind of zoom around the singularity. So we have x minus x0, the new variable, but div divided by t minus t, okay, capital T minus t, which means that we will improve the zoom as t uh, approaches capital T. And more importantly, this, the solution u is in fact multiplied by the inverse of some ODE uh, solution. So in fact, when we do this, we are trying to make the ratio between our solution and the ODE solution, which blows up at the same time. We would like to know if W is bounded from above, bounded from below, and maybe have a profile in these variables. Now, we also have this uh, soliton, which is a solution of the PDE satisfied by W. I should have wrote, uh, written down this uh, PDE. Uh, this, is, this is a mistake, but well, uh, anyway, it's, it, it's in the papers and they will be happy, happy to, to show it. So this solution has this uh, soliton as stationary solution. If you have a stationary solution in W, this means that you have a self-similar solution arising from this in the UXT setting. And here with this uh, uh, definition, we can give the asymptotic behavior. If we are in the, the case of non-characteristic points, then W will converge to this soliton, to this stationary solution, with plus or minus, of course. But if we are in the uh, characteristic case, then W will show a decomposition into a multi-soliton. So we have a sum of more than two solitons okay, which have alternate signs, two neighbors do not have the same sign. And more importantly, this uh, uh, parameter travels with time according to this uh, formula, okay? Uh, so let me make a comment about this soliton. When d equals zero, you have the solution of the, of the ODE. Okay, it's a constant here. If you go back to UXT, you have the solution of the ODE. And if you, in UXT you apply the Lorentz transform, then you obtain in W this soliton. Okay, and D is the parameter of the uh, Lorentz transform. So here D will travel in time and probably it's better to show you some uh, drawing. Before that, 
I would just uh, uh, would like to mention that with Raphael quote, we could prove that any for any number of solitons, you can have a solution which has exactly this behavior. Let me make some illustration of what happens in the case of characteristic points. So here we will we will make one further uh, change of variables. So in fact, here, when x t is in the backward like code with vertex x0, t of x0, y will be always in the unit ball, okay? And s goes to infinity. So we are in a kind of cylinder, infinite cylinder. Now in this setting, we will make one further change of variable. Remember, we are in one space dimension and I will write y is the hyperbolic tangent of xi. So xi is in r. y is between negative 1 and 1, and xi is in r. So when x is, is in the light cone, y is in the unit ball, and xi is in r. And I change y, w with this factor in front of that, and immediately you see that my decomposition will show familiar objects. Here, these guys are in fact, the KDV solitons. And you have the justification why we call them solitons in our setting. So in fact, this W bar sub X zero, as S goes to infinity, which means T goes to capital T, okay? So here we have a decomposition on the sum of solitons. For example, when you have only four solitons, you will have two which travel to the left and two which travel to the right. And you see that two neighbors have different signs, okay? Uh, here you see the centers of the solitons, they are given with this formula. And you see here that, for example, when k equals four, this gives us 2.5. Uh, so the first and the second will have a negative sign here. They go to the left and so on for the others. If ever you have k, which is odd number, then you will have a soliton which will stay in the middle, which will not move in fact. Why we have these uh, formulas? And this is a very interesting phenomena because the centers of the solitons obey this first order TODA system. As you know, TODA system is the second order uh, system where here we have a second derivative. And in fact, in our setting, we have a first order TODA system and if we add z, z, zeta zero, which is negative infinity, and zeta k plus one, which is plus infinity, then, okay, this is meaningful completely for any uh, i between one and k. Here, the center of mass of the solitons is conserved, okay? And we have this, uh, this formula. It's easy to find the alpha i, which are constants here. And here we see the... Uh, the center of mass of my solitons. If you shift one soliton, then you, uh, immediately all the solitons uh, will be shifted by the same uh, center of mass. Now, I would like to mention uh, the, the regularity, okay, of the blow up set. If we are in R, which is a set of non-characteristic points, then T is of class C1. And here, you remember that I told you that W converge to this soliton. But this D, in fact, which is a parameter which comes from the Lorentz transform, is in fact something which, is, uh, which has a geometrical interpretation. It's exactly the derivative of the blow-up set. So uh, this is what happens with non-characteristic points. With characteristic points, in fact, the Blow-up curve will have, a, will have a singularity at the characteristic points. It will be corner-shaped. It will be asymptotic to the backward light cone. So the dashed red line is the boundary of my domain of definition, and it is asymptotic to this backward light cone. And in fact, if you make the difference between the dashed red uh, curve and the blue, you find this expression. And in this expression, you see, you have a log here, perturbation. You can see immediately, okay, the number of solitons in the power of the log, okay? 
And also there is something uh, important here, depending of the sign, depending, uh, yes, of, of x minus x zero, you will see here a different constant, which is not the same from the left and uh, the right, okay? So generically, if zeta zero, the center of mass of the solitons is not zero, then you don't have exactly a symmetric uh, solution, in fact. Some generalizations. So we could, with Muhammad Ali Hamza, we could uh, prove that we have the same results if you perturb your nonlinearity with f of u, which is less than u to the power q, q less than p, or all, even with damped solutions with perturbations with dtu, dxu, x and t, but at the expense of having something which never shows a power more than one here. We cannot. Uh, sh uh, deal with equations having a uh, larger power. One more generalization, it's in high dimensions and the radial symmetry outside the er origin, because when you go to the similarity variables, this will appear as a lower order perturbation. So we are in some sense in the radial setting outside the origin, uh, like in uh, in a solution in one space dimension with perturbations. Of course, we can do a mixture of both cases, okay? And also we can uh, handle the vector, uh, vector valued case. So for example, here, when u uh, is complex valued by my former student, Asma Zayez, or also in higher, with, uh, uh, higher vector valued uh, systems, in fact. We did it together later. Uh, my co-author Hamza and one of his students could also handle uh, some perturbations which are only uh, in, the, in the log uh, scale of perturbations. You have the same u to the p and then log to the power negative a u. Now what happens when n is more than 2? We know as far as classification is known we have very very little results. So this w, in fact, when you are in the non-characteristic case, it is the good scale. So this, your solution will behave, uh, at least for the blow up rate, like the ODE, because w is bounded from below, away from zero, and bounded from above, away from infinity. When you are in the case of characteristic points, well, we don't have a lower bound. We have only a larger bound, but here in a smaller uh, place, we are not in the unit ball, which means that we are not in the whole uh, uh, backward light cone. We have uh, a cone with slope two, in fact, but at least we have some, some result. Okay, so no classification, okay. And the only examples that are known in the literature are rigorously radial, or simply you take a solution which depends only on one dimensional variable. It is, of course, artificially a 2D or 3D uh, solution. Okay. Our question was, can we find new blow-up solutions with characteristic points it, with no 1D behavior which are not radial? And this is the goal of this talk, okay? So, in fact, before uh, working on this, we wanted to handle this open question. Can you find a solution where S is cross-shaped? Okay, is, this is still an open question. Now, more generally for PDEs, the geometry of the singular set is they largely open in PDEs. This is my opinion, at least. So for example, for the semilinear heat equation with Sobolev subcritical exponent, in fact, all the examples that are available at the researcher are show either a singular set with a single point or a finite number of points, a sphere or a finite number of concentric spheres. That's it. For example, in 2D, can you have a solution which blows, blows up for the heat equation 
on an ellipse, open problem. On a cross, open problem. For the semilinear wave equation, because the solution blows up everywhere in space, the good notion for singular points concerns, in fact, characteristic points. Okay, so we can ask uh, the same kind of uh, questions. Now, this is the new result. We did it with Franck Merle, and the statement is, uh, I hope, simple to understand. You have a solution which is not global, which blows up in finite time under a one Lipschitz graph, okay, x gives t of x, and this graph is nearly pyramid shaped. So if you have here an equal sign, this means that the graph is rigorously a pyramid. Okay, try to think about that, okay? But here, we don't have inequality. It's asymptotically like uh, the pyramid, but it's never uh, equal to the pyramid, by the way. And more importantly, the origin is an isolated characteristic point, meaning that when x is close to zero, but different from zero, we have a non-characteristic point. So this is for the geometry. Of course, u of x t is not radial because uh, the pyramid is not radial, okay? Our solution is symmetric with respect to the axis and anti-symmetric with respect to bisectrices. In, per in particular, it's always zero on the bisectrices. Okay. Then, okay, in fact, let's talk about the regularity of the blow-up graph near the origin. I'm stating a simple principle. The blow graph is not equal to the pyramid, it's asymptotic to the pyramid and different from the pyramid, but it has the regularity of the pyramid, meaning that it is C1 outside the bisectrices, okay? And there we can compute a derivative in X1, which is negative one like the pyramid, but with this correction, so it's not a pyramid, and well, uh, in the other uh, direction. So this is just for the place where x2 is less than x1 and more than zero because we have me too many symmetries. So here it's enough to, to, to mention only this. And then on the bisectrices, we have directional derivatives except in the direction of the bisectors. Okay, and at the origin, we have directional derivatives for t of x except along the bisectrices. And here, in fact, we were surprised to see that we have the first example of a non-characteristic point where t is non-differentiable and u is zero. Because in 1D, in fact, when you have a non-characteristic point, first u is not zero at all, second t is differentiable, in fact, and the derivative of t is the parameter of the Lorentz uh, parameter appearing in the profile. Now, let's talk about the blow-up behavior. Okay? Uh, sorry, yeah. Uh, so at the origin, here, we will see a decoupled multi-solitons localized around the axis. Look, this is W0, the self-similar change of variable, and you, you see here four uh, solitons. So one which is centered along the x1 axis, and it has its brother on the other side, and same thing for the other axis. And you see that you have here plus sign, plus sign, and negative sign, and negative sign. But if you put all these people on a circle, then you start from this one, and you go, uh, let's say, uh, clockwise, the second that you find is this one, which, is, which comes with a negative. And then the third is this one, which comes with a positive sign. And finally, you end up on the top with this, which has negative. So the idea of having different signs uh, between neighbors is still conserved here. I simply give again this soliton, okay? And in fact, because of the symmetries, all the parameters are the same, and you can see them here. And they, they, this parameter solves the ODE, uh, the following ODE, which is related to the first order to the system in one space uh, dimension. 
okay and then this d bar is close to to negative one with this uh, expansion okay now this was the behavior at the origin which is the characteristic point and the only characteristic point in the neighborhood you see four solitons now what happens when we are outside the origin then in fact the w will converge to a stationary solution in similarity variables okay so here it's like the 1d case we will have uh, for example in this place okay we will have this soliton as uh, a limit and you, you have here the value of the parameter okay and now if you are in on the bisectrices then we have a new genuinely two-dimensional stationary solution which is not radial and does not depend only on one coordinate and this also was a surprise for us because we were thinking that the only stationary solutions are these solitons this is wrong by the way i know from the work by bison and co-authors that we have many radial uh, stationary solutions in fact well we thought that we only have the solutions of bison and co-authors this soliton but with this work we could find a different kind okay and this is in fact a new stationary solution the proof now in the 15 last minutes or 13 last minutes i will give you a flavor of the proof which is extremely hard and extremely lengthy in fact we have two major steps though the strategy is not that uh, complicated but the impl implementation is really extremely hard we have two steps the first one is we stay in the light cone with vertex zero t zero and this is possible because of finite speed of propagation we only work there okay we construct w0 okay remember that w0 i show you here shows four solitons so we want to construct a solution w0 which has a multi-soliton like that this is step one step two once this solution exists of course because we have a kind of cutoff the solution exists beyond the light cone and we will take this solution and we'll try to find its behavior when uh, for any x in fact at least in the neighborhood of the the origin so we would like two things first the behavior the asymptotic behavior of w and also the regularity of the blow up set okay and let me mention only the second remark the asymptotic behavior of the solution and the regularity of blow up set are really very linked and has to be advanced side by side you cannot first uh, deal with the asymptotic behavior and then the regularity no you do them side by side okay let me move to the first case so this is the goal we construct a solution in similarity variables showing four solitons okay i just recall uh, the goal here the framework is somehow classical it's the construction of a solution with prescribed uh, behavior what's the method we simply linearize the equation around the intended behavior meaning that you take the pde satisfied by w0 and you linearize around the sum of four solitons with this parameter obeying this law and then you handle the uh, linear uh, part. The linear op operator is extremely important. You have three regions in the spectrum. The negative spectrum, which is controlled thanks to a linearized version of the Lyapunov functional, okay, related to the W variable. And then we have two uh, non-negative uh, eigenvalues lambda equals zero which is controlled thanks to modulation in the parameter d in kappa d y and lambda equals one which is controlled thanks to modulation in the parameter nu of the generalized solitons here when nu is zero you have the solitons which are stationary solutions in w but then when you have nu with nu equals mu e to the s 
Then you have other solutions, in fact, which are deformations of this uh, soliton, in fact. And the, when nu is large, positive, then this generalized soliton will become small. If nu is negative, then this generalized soliton can blow up, in fact. So when you uh, change a little bit your new, you can make a modulation, and this modulation can kill the lambda equals one uh, eigenvalue. And we were uh, inspired here by the construction of a multi-soliton multi in 1D with my work in, with Raphael Cotte. Now, because uh, we are in, in this uh, nice audience, we have many experts here which worked uh, on PDE with prescribed behavior. So I asked my former student, Vantin Guyen, to help me uh, make this list of people who worked on uh, the construction of solution to a PDE with prescribed behavior. This is for the case of heat equation, NLS, wave type equations, and also other equations. I apologize, probably I forgot uh, I for many other people, but at least we did our best. Now, once the step one is finished, we will uh, move to step two. So if you are at x zero equals zero, you know that you have four solitons. So because you constructed a solution showing four solitons for w zero. Okay, now we would like to take x0, which is non-zero, and try to find the behavior. So in fact, when you want the behavior for y in the unit ball and s going to infinity, this means that you want the behavior in the backward light cone with vertex x0, tx0. But if x0 is small, okay, the sections of two backward light cones, Cx0 and C0 are almost the same, okay? More importantly, since Wx0 comes from Uxt and W0 comes also from Uxt, you can go directly from W0 to Wx0. And you have this nice expression between the two uh, localization of the solution here at the origin and here at some point which is different from the origin. So since W0 shows four solitons, which are, which are exactly the same, when you take X0 different from zero, you will still have four solitons, but they will be generalized solitons with a deformation. So let me go back to this. When X0 is different from the origin, you will see this parameter appearing. And when it appears, then this means that we are moving away from the case nu equals zero, and we will either have a larger soliton if nu is negative or a smaller soliton if nu is positive. And good news here, which is not, uh, how to say, which is not obvious in fact, we fully understand the flow of the PDE near sums of, multi, of decoupled generalized solitons. So near multi-solitons, we know the flow. Why? Because if I go back to my picture, let me, it's, I don't have too many pictures here. Sorry. Uh, yeah, here, the distance between the centers of solitons goes to infinity, you can see it here. So locally in space, it's as if we have only one soliton. Since we know uh, very well what happens at near one soliton, even in the case when you have a multi-soliton, you can localize in space and each time you will see only one soliton. So you always know the dynamics and the behavior of your flow there. Let me go, okay, back to the place where I was. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so this is what I was saying. We have really something with a deformation, okay? 
And now we have two cases. If X0 is not on the bisectrices, so because of symmetries, you can assume that X2 is less than X1, both are positive. In fact, we will follow our four generalized solitons in time until three of them will become very small and only one will stay. When you have only one, if you know that X0 is non-characteristic, then this parameter is your gradient, okay? So you link the asymptotic behavior to the, uh, in fact, to the uh, geometry, in fact, because the gradient is the slope uh, that you have in, in two dimensions. Okay. And this is your, your gradient. Okay. In fact, if X0 is characteristic, because at first we did not know that X0 which is near the origin was not uh, characteristic. So we had to handle this case, which uh, appears to be empty at the, at the end. And in fact, it's more uh, difficult. The information will come from uh, neighbors, in fact. Okay. Now we have another case where X0 is on the bisectrices. Say, for example, X2 is like X1. Here, Remember that the solution is anti-symmetric with respect to the bisectrices. So this means, sorry, that we will have two solitons which will remain. So on the four solitons that we had here, generalized solitons, two will uh, disappear and we will have two which will remain respecting the symmetry with respect to the bisectrices. So we have E1 here, E2, and we have different signs, okay? And in fact, once again, looking at the neighbors, we will see that X0 is non-characteristic. Uh, I, I knew from the beginning that I will not have uh, much time to deal with this, but there is uh, a notion of umbrella property, which can be found in the paper anyway, okay? So when we know that we have a non-characteristic point, which is not a nasty point, then we will converge to a stationary solution. This is easy to prove. And this uh, stationary solution will be close to this sum of two uh, solitons, one localized on the X1 axis and the other on the X2 axis. Okay, so this is, the new kind of stationary solution. Okay, and it's not radial and it's not 1D. And I thank you for your attention.